Uh, what do you think about YouTube? Uh, I think YouTube is very useful. Like when you have to search like a videos or music that you want to listen to. It's pretty cool whenever I want to like, like I learned how to change a tire, put a tire on it. I just listen to music on YouTube. Yeah, you, you uh, listen oh, to Oh, League of Legends videos. That's what I do. So you watch gameplays a lot? Yeah. YouTube. YouTube. I actually enjoy YouTube. I use it for if there's something that I don't know how to do. I don't know how to do something, I just Google it or YouTube it. What do you like on YouTube? What do you, uh, what do you look uh, up? Mostly I just listen to like music videos. Uh, are those like artists, mainstream artists, or you listen to underground rappers? Nah, a little bit of both. Yeah, do you know any rappers, like unknown rappers? My head. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, I'd really rather read, um, the newspapers. Do you guys think it's uh, it's improved your lives or like helped your lives? Um, yeah, I guess. Makes it easier. It does, yeah. I've definitely found ways or how to's or um, just, yeah, so definitely it does. Alright, so here we are in front of the uh, elephants. And the cool thing about these guys is, they, is that they have really, really, really long um, fronts. And that's, that's cool. And that's pretty much all there is to say. On April 23rd, 2005, Jawid Karim uploaded an 18 second video of him at the San Diego Zoo on a website he founded with his PayPal co workers, Steve Shen and Chad Hurley. The inspiration for the site came when Joey couldn't find a place to see the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004. Oh, and the 2004 Super Bowl halftime incident with Janet Jackson. Hurley and Shen had thought to make the site an online dating service based on videos, but they quickly pivoted to a video sharing site. And that's what it was, sharing videos. Everybody who had an internet connection could upload their own video and share it to the world. Whether you were from Anoka, Nebraska, or Chicago, Illinois, it didn't matter. People really took a liking to the site. By July 2006, over 65,000 new videos uploaded and delivering 100 million video views per day. But the amazing part is, the majority of the users were 12 to 17 years old. This platform embodied what the generation was to become. It was our time. Oh man, I don't know, I would have been like, because I think YouTube started in 2006 or 2007. Um, I was a teenager and I had dial-up. So if I wanted to watch a video, I had to let it load for like an hour and a half. I think I just must have found out about it from sh people showing me videos or just finding them myself on the internet. And I was really intrigued by it and I just wanted to start doing something on it, anything. So I just would start making videos of myself with my, with, I think it was like my mom's laptop that she had like one of the Macs with a little like a webcam on it. But our story begins in the middle of May 2007 when YouTube created its partnership program to share ad revenue with its creators. The partnership program was the cornerstone in creating the YouTube community. The system was simple. You upload your original content regularly and in return you get 55% of the ad revenue. It's a dream job. You get paid for making videos online and creating your own content that could be viewed all around the world. But the problem is that you need to get the views. So about in your channel, you, uh, you, have, you monetize your site. So why did you decide to do that? Why did you decide to start that? I think that creators should get paid in any way they can. Like, I mean, like the most, I mean, they should try to make it ethical, obviously. But I think that it's a lot of work to create videos and that sort of thing and come up with ideas and any sort of extra income can help with that. Um, it was always just an extra help to have that extra money coming in yeah. um, and that was always nice. It's not much, it's like barely any with Google AdSense. Um, I'd say like most of the money comes from, like extra money for like YouTube stuff or even social media stuff comes from brand sponsorships. Uh, because I need money. <laughs> I. Um, yeah, I actually started the the Strucci movies, the uh, the film nerd stuff. The I, I used to have a job making video for a university. 
um, last year. And the day I found out when I was going to be laid off, I wrote the first episode. I was like, I have to do something. I have to, you know, um, either to make money or as an outlet. Tube Mobile study in 2013 determined that for every 1,000 views on your video, with a pre-roll advertising, which is a short ad before the video, will get about $7.60, but only 55% of that is yours, so that comes out to $4.18 for 1,000 views. This is terrifying to content creators who had made this a full-time job. So to create as much revenue as possible, creators began to dish out videos at a faster rate to have more of their stuff out there, no matter what the quality. But by creating more videos, they were actually damaging themselves. The saturation of videos caused other videos to be obscured. So one great video they made would be overshadowed by a dozen of mediocre ones, which in turn caused the viewer to scroll right past them. So you would think that in a sea of videos uploaded to YouTube, the site would provide a way to show its creators, right? I mean, it's in their own interest. Well, no. At least not anymore. That's a YouTube problem. I, I wouldn't say that it's those shows, as, like that show, pro, like their problem. I'd say, I think that YouTube has changed the front page of their platform and they have changed how their algorithm works. Back when I started, it was way easier for creators to be discovered and to, for me to find new creators. They've kind of like changed it up now and they support people who are already big and it's hard to find the smaller people now. So I'm saddened by that because I know that there are still a lot of amazing creators out there who aren't getting discovered like they would have in 2008. In the beginning of YouTube, they had a section known as the Featured. This was a place to show the most popular channels on YouTube and also just to show some amazing creators. But in 2010, when YouTube decided to redesign their interface, it was left out. The closest thing we have now is the trending section, but that is filled with content that is supposed to be trending according to some algorithm. Plus, only seven videos of the trending section right now were uploaded by original YouTube creators, and that's where one of the site's problems is. And we know some people might argue that, since I don't want to pay for a cable provider, YouTube is useful for seeing events like the Olympics or presidential debates on channels like NBC. Don't get us wrong, we are perfectly fine with companies like Sony, Disney, and NBC uploading their content. But what we find morally outrageous is that these companies use the same pre-roll advertising that YouTube partners use to create more revenue. Plus, some of these companies have their own websites to upload their content. Why are these videos spotlighted if there is another location to find this content on their internet for free? So not only are they taking the spotlight away from creators, they are making a heap of money in the process. But since money off of ad revenues isn't enough for these companies, companies now use methods to make money off of other people's content. This method has been plaguing the YouTube community for some years now, which mainly affects reviewers, which is a big percentage of creators. I'm talking about the content ID system. To battle piracy of movies or TV shows, YouTube implemented the content ID system to aid the industry to detect and cease the culprits. So how it works is that movie companies put a time limit on how much material can be used by other people. YouTube feeds it to its system, and the system checks through millions of videos to see if people are abiding by the standards. It's an automated system. So let's say you upload your thoughts of a movie, and you use some footage to explain those thoughts. If the system detects that you are using more than the predetermined time, then your video is given a copyright claim. Your video is still viewable, but this is like YouTube saying, hey, this stuff is copyrighted, so back off. But since you only gave your thoughts on it instead of uploading the entire movie, you submit a dispute, kind of like saying, hey, that's cool and all, but I only use short clips with my opinion of your movie, so we good? In return, YouTube sends your dispute to the copyright holder, i.e. the studio, and it can either go one of two ways. One, the studio recognizes that you are only using short clips and releases the claim. Or two, the studio sees this as an opportunity to milk some money out of you and your channel, which option sounds like more fun. If the studio decides to use the latter, they will hit you with a copyright strike. Your video is taken down, and this is an official message saying, if you don't fix your video, we will take you to court. YouTube's system allows you to have three video strikes on your channel. 
You might think that three strikes is enough, but a lot of people are being sued by different studios, and once you hit that third strike, your channel is terminated, and all of your long, hard work is gone. Just like that. And all of YouTube's involvement was just a robot. No human interaction of any kind. Your job, your livelihood, your money is in the hands of a robot. And all of that ordeal we went through was illegal because of the fair use doctrine. It's a pain when I know that what I'm making qualifies under fair use and it gets taken down or it gets blocked in certain countries or certain creators are limited, even though, it, like, it, when you constantly have to fight YouTube. And the way YouTube is set up, um, it sort of tries, to me, it's like it's trying to scare the creator into not contesting. So what fair use is, is a copyright law that promotes freedom of expression by allowing the unlicensed use of copyright material in order to critique, report, or educate. But companies violate the law and seek legal action against these channels almost every day because maybe their reviewers said something bad about their product or maybe they just want to drain as much money as possible out of their product. I mean, what happened? A place where people can share their art all around the world has now been turned into an industry of intimidation, greed, and negligence. Kinda sound familiar? We made this to show you that what we had was an opportunity of a lifetime. This platform was ours and ours only. Instead of trying to land a record deal or get a studio to screen your movie, you could have just uploaded it to YouTube and within an instant shared it with millions around the world. But now, we're losing it. So if you want to watch Jimmy Fallon mouth words to a pop song, go ahead. But if you want to see a glimmer of what we as creators can do with nothing but hard work, check out some channels like Anna Reset or Shannon Sturgey, people who put their heart and soul into their channels. Now, most of your videos are about like lifestyle, life choices. Um, why did you choose to, to make that like the main focus of your channel? I think that over time, um, as I like gained followers on YouTube, I wanted to make sure that I was doing something that I cared about a lot. Um, and I was thinking about things in my own life that I was interested in, and I wanted to have more of a dialogue on online about that with people. So I realized like making videos where I bring things up was a really good way to convey how I thought about a topic and get my audience's opinion like right away through comments. Uh, why did you pick film as your main focus of your channel? Oh, it's because I'm obsessed with it. That's what I know the most about. Um, I, I, it was really cool and also kind of upsetting that my video games essay immediately got way more views than anything I had made. And so I think still it's like tied with the first episode, which has been around since last February. Um, well, it's all, I mean, it's because it made Polygon and stuff. Uh, so I'm also trying to trying different things and seeing what works the best that I still enjoy doing. But I mean, I love film and I it's the thing I know the most about and can teach the most people stuff about. We can still make YouTube ours again but there needs to be some changes.